Bam, ba damn, ho, oh, Black Betty, bam, ba damn, Black Betty had a child. Bam, ba damn, she's right here and she's wild. Ah. Hey, I'm T-Bone and this is my setup for the season. We get asked a lot, so uh, let's go over this thing from soup to nuts. This is the Helix. Machined riser, they offer the same bow in the RX3, but this is the machined riser. I'm opting to go with that. It's just a little bit uh, uh, more girthy, I guess you could say. It weighs about four more ounces. Um, we'll start right here with the quiver. I choose the Six Era Fuse Quiver, and part of the reason why is because it has two points of contact so that the era is hugged in two places and we're not relying on the foam to dull the broadheads they actually stay suspended in there that's why i choose a two point of contact quiver the fuse quiver next in line is uh tom a 29 and a quarter inch draw length uh let's just start up here at the top uh, on the strings you'll notice i got all green strings bone collector style strings but i'd like to shoot uh, one colored string. I'm not a big fan of the multicolored string. They do look very well, but in my opinion, when you got a black and a green, they're actually from two different spools, so they could stretch uh, at a different rate. So therefore, uh, maybe uh, rotate or settle, if you will. Probably being a little anal on that, but nonetheless, I like the way a solid string looks and way, way it performs. Next in line, you're gonna see this big glob right here. This is from Specialty Archery Products. And because of my age, I have to shoot a verifier peep. So this has a lens inside there to uh, help me with uh, being able to see the pins at close distance because I have to wear readers to read. Coming on down, I shoot a micro kisser button. Just another place to hang your hat. So you got your anchor of your hand, you got the anchor in the corner of your mouth, tip your nose to the string, and then of course, the final one is the peep side. D-loop, reverse knot D-loop, uh, pretty anal about this. I have soft knocks right here. Uh, that's to where you always have a place to hang your hat, um, your center shot wise, and then you can manipulate the D-loop, change the length of it, and I never lose home base here with these soft knocks. So I've always got my center shot, even if I have to change the loop in the field. Then for the rest, I've got this Virtus. This is an HHA Virtus rest. Really, really, really love this thing. Tightest tolerances of any drop away rest on the market. It is all machined aluminum. Uh, the only thing that is plastic is actually the launcher and we actually custom wrap it with micro suede here so that it's whisper quiet on the drawback. And we tie it in, not relying on the self adhesive so it can change whether it gets wet, cold, or what have you. Really tight tolerances. You can't get any slop in there. Um, I challenge you to try that on any other rest and you're gonna see a little slop. Also, I'm a big fan of this because it has such a short timing or draw cord. A lot of the ones that go all the way down to the limb, uh, the percentage of stretch is longer and plus it's another thing to hang on limbs and such if you're uh, spotting and stalking and stuff. So the shorter, in my opinion, the better. Less stuff to go wrong, it's more dependable. This is a dead ringer sight. I'm all about simplicity. Whitetail hunting, this is the, cheap, the site that I chose to go with because it's just so simple. It's a five pin, fixed pin, extremely quiet, makes no noise. And this site right here is only $39.99. I'm kind of proud of that fact. So that uh, Billy Joe Lunch Bucket can go pick that up and go kill him a, a buck of a lifetime. Release wise is the True Ball Beast 2. It has a swept back uh, trigger. Been shooting this exact same one since 2008. Very proud to have helped uh, a little bit on the design on this. Me, Michael, and Nick are still shooting the same ones, as well as I'm a big fan of the buckle strap non uh, Velcro so that it stays in position. Fuse stabilizer, uh, very good in shock absorbing. I'm a big proponent of making sure your stabilizer goes straight to the bow. A lot of times if you've got something in between there, your stabilizer wants to come loose and then also it's not as effective as if it was going straight to the bow, being as the stabilizer is the farthest point in front of the bow. Then I've got this offset. This is a uh, offset bracket that Fuse makes, Hoyt makes, and it is excellent, extremely, extremely stable. And then I've got an offset bracket because you see people shooting these things if you look at a bow, everything is offset to the right hand if you're a right-handed archer and you're bolting all the weight, quiver and everything. So your bow naturally wants to cant to the right. With this lower offset, it adds a little more mass weight right under your hand and it helps you keep the bow level so that you uh, keep your bubble square at longer distances. Therefore, you don't have so many left and rights at longer distances. Right now, I'm experimenting with this. I took the grip off because I like a real narrow, low wrist grip. Then, of course, the Ninja my son gave me years ago, so I try to incorporate that with every bow. That's kind of my good luck piece and remind myself of family. The arrows that we're going to be using, of course, they're going to be topped with the dead meat broadhead, but uh, it is the bone collector arrows 
350 spine is the the spine that I'm using. I'm still playing with the point weight and uh, the weighted inserts. Um, I've been playing a lot uh, trying to get the FOC in that 13 to 17 percent and the weight wise about 475 to 550 grains. So um, to me anything walking in North America um, I'm going to have something that's extremely forgiving at long distances. It's going to be uh, not affected by wind that much and then of course the main important thing that it's going to penetrate like penetrate like no other once it gets there so combination with the dead meat where legal and then of course the striker v2 where we need to use mechanicals uh, that's what we're going to be shooting arrow wise this year i, I kind of was attracted to the picture on the back <laughs> so uh i don't know what else to tell you that's uh pretty much my setup hopefully uh we fill a lot of freezers and punch a lot of tags with this setup. Thank you Hoyt for making such great bows and this Helix being aluminum riser is the same geometry as the carbon riser so that's my setup aka Black Betty. Bam ba damn ho oh, Black Betty bam ba damn Black Betty had a child bam ba damn she's right here and she's wild. Ah.